used some of that funding for to pay the debt on the 2.5 million that we borrowed from Pacific Cove because we were relocating uh, low income people to that area. So that's the resources we have. The key housing projects that we have in the queue right now are obviously the housing element. Uh, we also have the rezones associated with the housing element with the goal to try to get those done this year. We've been using uh, some of these funds to support our regional contribution to the Housing for Health partnership. Uh, those are the sheltering options that we do in partnership with the other cities in the county. And then really the key here is to seek partnerships with a nonprofit to develop a, a affordable housing a number of sort of preliminary irons in the fire nothing that's ready sort of for for public discussion yet at this stage but those would be the big ticket items that really i think would help would, would help and also would utilize some of these funds and then lastly the ecyp funding it's the early youth childhood program funding council will recall this is a small carve off of our hotel tax that we get and it's restricted to supporting uh, early childhood and youth um, programs in the city. Most of the funding is subscribed and is used to grants to nonprofits, um, but there is some funding available in this year's budget. We think about $37,000. Last year, we put $39,000 of ECYP funding into a multi-year scholarship fund for recreation. We also kicked off the swim lesson equity program that was designed to help folks junior guard ready who might not traditionally be able to be junior guard ready when it comes time for the junior guard season and then also two thousand dollars for job skill programs for some of our uh, younger instructors who work with the kids so with that it takes me to the end of the presentation i think we're going to have robust conversation and questions about it. recommendations tonight are to confirm the high level budget goals that jim went over confirm that the projects that we didn't do last year that we want to carry over into next year and then identify the new goals and key projects for our next fiscal year. With that, I'm available for questions. Thank you. Council questions? Um, I can start. The if We can move back a couple of slides to where in parentheses it says resiliency fund and it has the breakdown of maybe one more two three four back do, do, do. there so um moving forward with the 4.8 are we generally saying that we're no longer going to with the new expenditures we're no longer going to be having a resiliency fund of 385 because we're kind of just is that what the recommendation yeah. that you're presenting today yeah. is okay at this, at this point what we're recommending is targeting a fund balance of 500k um you know, honestly, we can characterize it as yeah. a resiliency fund of 385 and then a $115,000 yeah, no. fund balance. Yeah, that's not, no, I don't think that's necessary. And then um, one or two slides back about the projects. So we have the projects from last year. And so my question is, um, do we feel confident with the carryover of some of these projects? So you've, you've identified funding for the community center and some of these other things, but um, not any additional funding for these and so my question to you is out of our 2022 23 goals should we be thinking about funding any of these projects to completion um before creating new projects that's a great question and obviously the biggest one on the list is the community center uh, because that did have a major allocation this year i think i think we're good i mean i think the city hall option study is going to lead to more work sure. so that will need more money down the road and that's part of the logic behind holding back that million bucks um i think we're good on these projects with the budget allocation that we have so the ones in red in your in your color-coded graph we don't need to worry about but we can expect them to be completed yeah we can expect you can expect to see hearings on those items seeing them completed this next fiscal year that's the goal okay so I'll just restate that we're confident with the 2022-23 goals that we'll see those through and then anything added today would be in addition to that. I just want, I'm playing it safe in terms of funding yeah. and any other future projects. I think that's a fair characterization. I, I do think that, you know, in my experience having done this, when we get to a year from now, we're doing this again. I would love to say that everything on this page, mm -hmm. everything on this page, everything on this page, and everything here is done. Mm -hmm. 
it, it won't sure. play out that way. Yeah, and that's the goal. And there will be some that, you know, just for whatever reason, aren't able to be done. And some of them are multi-year. But yes, that is possible. Okay, and then um, to the allocation for streets. Um, so we have received in the past a breakdown of the costs associated with repaving of our streets and so forth. Dare I put you on the spot <laughs> to see if you have that information available to us so that we know what we're, what you're suggesting lines up to what actually the needs are. Yes, I'm, there you go. So uh, Council Member Brooks is referring to our pavement management plan and this is from a presentation that was made to the council, I think it was maybe last spring, and it went through kind of a multi-year uh, plan for what streets would be targeted at what time. The, the yellow line is light rehabilitation, and the orange line, which is a little harder to tell, is heavy rehabilitation. And so the plan projects for fiscal year, this next fiscal year we're going into was Capitola Road, basically from city limits to 41st Avenue. The plan for fiscal 24 next year is some major work on Raposa and lower 41st, as well as then the green streets you can see with light maintenance. Um, so the funding, the funding that I'd recommend uh, could really do probably the heavy work here, or it could do all the green work. Um, and you don't need to make that decision at this time. We will have a more robust discussion during the budget cycle. But to give you a sort of a flavor of it, it would let us move forward from 2024, sort of half of this project. Okay, can you move to the, the slide where you are showing how you're gonna utilize the 4.8 so that I can just make sure that makes sense because I thought it was pretty specific. Okay, pavement management at 350,000. And so that's what we said for phase two was 350,000 when it was presented to us um, for the next phase. I just it's going to be plus the 550. Five, six, seven, eight. So $900,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that would, when this project was planned, it was planned around about $550,000. So we would and then moving forward. Okay. Perfect. That makes so sense. Um, those are all my questions. Thank you. Thank you. I had a question about the wharf grant. Um, I had, I've had folks come up to me and, and ask me about money that was allotted in the years past and then. Um, they, they seem to say that things were missing and money was spent elsewhere. I wonder if we could just outline that one more time. We went a little fast on it. Yeah, so really quickly, Measure F funding has all gone towards council-directed Measure F projects. So we used the funding to renovate the jetty. We used the funding to renovate the flume, which is the concrete structure on the beach that conveys uh, Soquel Creek under the beach in the summer. We use the funding, I believe, to help buy ourselves the loader. Um, that's the loader we use to grade the beach. And we used a little bit of funding to help with um, some of the work that we did around Depot Hill, I believe, on the pathways around there. Does that sound right, Jim? Yes. <clears throat> we, also, we also put it towards um, uh, law enforcement and police during COVID the first year. Oh, we put a small portion, yes, that's right. We put a some portion of Measure F towards maintaining our police department during the first year of COVID. All other funding for Measure F has gone into the war. So at this point, between that funding, the state's contribution, we got 1.9 million from the state of California for the war. I think we used the first 500K of that. To, uh, we replaced the piles at the end of the war, if you'll remember, by the way. Really glad Steve did that because I think the end of the wharf would look as bad as the middle of the wharf. If we had done yeah. that. Um, all of that funding in Measure F and then the 3.5 million that's coming in from the federal government, that's all in the pot at this point. So at this point, we have about 275 extra, and so that's available for other projects. That's a lot of numbers. I know. I'm numbers. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Well, do you, would you mind just giving like a brief, like what Measure F was intended for? You know, I'm prepared for that. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you were prepared. Thank you. <laughs> we came out. All the might come up. This is the actual me measure for me Measure F that the voters voted on. Um, so you can read the language there up on the screen. It talks about protecting essential city services facilities 
at least in emergency safety programs, protecting the wharf and beach from the storms and rising sea levels, parks, sidewalks, and bike lanes. Um, so that's the actual measure F language. Without the question mark, because we're doing that. Oh, that's true. That was the actual <laughs> cut and paste from that. Okay. Um, I think one thing that we can do, we've done this in the past, is we've provided a pretty good measure F, it's a comprehensive measure F accounting when we do the budget. So it sounds like it's probably worth doing that again as we present the budget. That's what I was just going to say. I yeah. typically do one to the FAC during, when we kick off budget, and then I'll bring one to the full council. And, and just to add that, it might be nice to add in what an actual measure means and how those create sure. restricted dollars versus general fund dollars. Um, I think the difference is very important for the community to know. Yeah, that is that is very important. And just to make sure that anyone listening today understands, the ECYD funding was restricted. <coughs> it was passed by 66% of the voters, and it has to be used for youth and early childhood education. Measure F is a general tax. It can be used for general city purposes. There's obviously an intent bit baked into this, and that's what we're trying to live up with, with the intent of what Measure F was intended to be for. But at the end of the day, it is general fund. Great. I have a question or two. Go for it. Yeah. Um, forgive me if you mentioned this. I was kind of trying to look through agenda and do some research while you were speaking to it at the same time. Um, when you talk about the 200,000 to replace city vehicles with electric vehicles, does that include the charging infrastructure or do we already have charging infrastructure? That's a great question. Um, so you remember that one of the projects that we highlighted last year that you put $20,000 into uh, was charging stations. Yeah. So right now our goal is to use that 20,000 coupled with incentives that uh, 3CE is offering to help build out some city fleet charging and then also partnering on the public-private partnership. This is kind of, it's, it, that's more of a gleam in my eye of whether we're able to get there, but for more public charging stations. So we think at this point that we would have resource, we'd have resources to get charging stations to charge the city fleet as we start to buy EVs. Right, because- Yeah, down the road we may need more, but I think as a starting point, we're in a good shape. Okay, yeah, because the 20,000 we put aside last time was for public charging stations, and this would need to be like at the Corp Yard, right? For, for our... That was my understanding, but I think... Oh, interesting. I, I had... My, my recollection was that those that 20,000 was... Um, I thought they were going to be in, like, the Paco parking lots. That, like, yeah, that's what I thought. For the public. That, that was my understanding last year. Oh. I, so we have some, right, yeah. in, in our parking lot. So I thought we identified actual spots in the village. Yeah, too. I thought they were going to be public spaces yeah. somewhere. Yeah, I don't know if I yeah, knew public. that thought they'd be here in oh, the village, oh. but yeah, yeah. public rather than city um City use, vehicle, yeah, use, yeah, public use vehicles. Well, so in that case, we may need to talk a little bit further about it. My thinking had been one of the lessons we've learned from the two charging stations we have in the city lot is that the city is not, um, we're not very expert in managing public charging stations. We haven't done a very great job of policing it, ensuring that people are actually paying for the electrons that they're using. And so the hope that we've had, we've actually had preliminary conversations with a couple of other cities that have tried this is the city has, I think we have something like 1,500 parking spaces within, you know, a mile of where we're sitting right now. That if we can bring that to the table, that we can find a private sector partner that then says, okay, you, we provide the land, you guys provide the charging infrastructure, we have an agreement with them. Uh, so the hope would be that we could do that at no cost. And then the thinking was that the 20,000, this was my own mental vision, would help us get fleet charging coupled with the funding from 3CE, because I think that they'll contribute a fair amount for fleet charging as well. Um, so that's the that's been my tentative plan, uh, but we can obviously adjust if we need to. Okay. Okay, um, my other question. So I was actually, it's funny, when you mentioned the um, Hill and Bay Avenue intersection, I started thinking, well, what about the roundabout? And then I started looking up where the roundabout was and like the transportation plan uh, with RTC, and then I heard you say something about the roundabout. So is that what that $1 million future infrastructure mm -hmm. project, is that what you were saying? It, it would go to something like that? I think something like that is a fair characterization. You know, okay. I'm not asking you to vote and decide, like, is it a million dollars <laughs> for the roundabout, or is it a million dollars for the playground, or is it a million dollars for City Hall? But there are, or the community center, right? Those are a number yeah. of big ticket items that are still sort of developing as projects. Uh, so that's my suggestion. 
holding it aside for one of those things. Okay, and then my last question, uh, the affordable housing resources, I think especially now as we're moving into our housing element and there's lots of questions, um, can you just give kind of a brief overview of how we can use this money, what it's actually used for? Are we financing affordable housing? Are we giving it to developers? Like how, are, how can we actually use this money? That's a really great question. That's probably more technical than I can actually answer. I will, I will give you a high level and then we'll see if our community development director wants, if you wanna go into a deeper dive. So as I mentioned, each one of these funding streams is different. And that's just because they come from different places and they have different requirements about how you can and can't use them. Our housing trust, starting from the bottom, is the most flexible. That's our funding that we collect from inclusionary funding. And it really, we can use it to improve or help low-income individuals, improve low-income housing or, or help low-income uh, individuals with housing. The, then going back up to the top, because I'm very familiar with redevelopment housing funds, those include really specific restrictions, and usually what you do is you use those funds to partner with nonprofit developers, and you have to deed restrict rental housing, I believe it's for 55 years, specific requirements. The home reuse has some really weird requirements that Katie's told me about, and I don't remember all the details, and the PLHA funding is new, so I'm gonna turn it over to Katie and see if you can help me with those. Okay, um, so the home reuse, we, we can look at, um, existing housing projects out there that need upgrades and assistance, so that's one thing we can use for home reuse. We can also, I believe, partner with the Santa Cruz uh, Housing Authority and in, in assisting with some like rental assistance or vouchers with home reuse. Um, but I, I can come back with or send out a summary to you of exactly what home reuse is, because it's, it's very technical, but I think one thing we've looked at in the past is um, there are some projects around town that are outdated and could use some updating, and home reuse would be a great use of those funds. Um, another thing with home reuse is uh, down payment assistance, but it is a needle in the haystack uh, uh, exercise of trying to find somebody that's low income that the home price is correct that they can afford and but we could utilize it for uh, down payment assistance the plha there's five categories that plha funding can be utilized for um, one is for the regional efforts towards homelessness and it's more of an immediate um, assistance so we've talked about for the hap using or it's now no longer the hap but the regional housing um, efforts, we can utilize money towards that. Two other categories are towards ownership projects for affordable housing and then rental projects for affordable housing. So for our, our purposes and our um, where we've dedicated money within our application for PLHA, and we just got the preliminary notice that um, our application has been approved, but we don't have a contract in place yet um, for that for 481,000. But we, put, we decided to put our money towards ownership units. We can always modify our application if there's a great rental project that comes through, but typically the city in the past has done ownership um, projects. And then there's two other buckets, and I wanna say one is for infrastructure, and I'm not sure what the other is for, but I can bring back, actually when we bring back the PLHA um, to adopt the receiving of the award, I, I can have a full summary on that for you. If there's any other questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you. Not to go off the rails here a little bit, but is that the funding when you say towards um, affordable rental, or excuse me, affordable um, ownership, is that the kind of funding that we helped with like the Bay Avenue um, senior? So the Bay project? Avenue senior project utilized two sources of funding, if I remember correctly. We put in, I think it was around a million dollars of uh, RDA funds, and then we put a chunk of home funding, I think, into so okay. the Bay Avenue Senior Project was developed by a third party nonprofit. And they came in and bought it from the Salvation Army, came through, they got together an entire funding package that included some city money as well as tax credits, um, and then ultimately built out the project. So, you know, I think in terms of thinking about these funds, there's a lot of different kinds of programs we can do, but I think maybe conceptualizing, we generally can make big allocations to partner with nonprofits to help build or renovate 
as the Bay Avenue project was, older housing. And then the other kind of thing we can do is more of the program type funding. And it's like things like CAB, helping CAB out with the emergency housing assistance to keep people from being evicted. It is the housing for health contributions that Katie mentioned, where we help fund regional shelters. It's kind of like the money where you write the check every year and you're helping people, but it's not building new stuff. So we have those kinds of things that we can fund with it. And then we also have the big ticket items. When you get those, you know, nonprofit developer that wants to renovate an apartment complex and buy it, and how we can participate and help those projects as well. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you for your patience, Willie. I, I have some questions standard. for Katie yeah. before she sits down. Is that, is that okay? No, yeah. Um, Katie, for with these dollars, what's being proposed today is a hundred thousand dollars for our housing program, which used to be three hundred thousand was general fund. Can any of these dollars be utilized for that program, and then that opens up more general fund for us for the housing element? No, the um, the employee assistance. The employee program. Oh, the employee oh. assistance. I don't believe these funds can be used because these are tied to. Uh, um, for low income and there would be restricted dollars in which with with if it was to um, I think the the only way it could qualify would be for the down payment assistance but that person would have to qualify as low income mm -hmm. and exact there there's so many technical aspects to that that in my time here we've had one successful down payment assistance program um, application passed through our CDBG grant yeah. Um, and we had that open for years. So it is a needle in the haystack. I think it'd be much more efficient to use the city program. We could, when that person comes in, we could see if, if what they're buying and their income I mean, would qualify. And maybe, but. I think that might be worth, I mean, we're talking about programs here and trying to think about opportunities. And before, Jamie, you go, the other point, uh, the other question and something you said was about the rental assistance. And so we have a three-year grant providing rental assistance for CAB currently, CAB, I think I'm getting the right one, um, but where we use our general fund to, to offer those grants. And again, I'm wondering why we're not, so I know we have our big grant for CAB, but then we they came back and negotiated more rental assistance um, program dollars. Mm -hmm. And we pulled that out of general fund rather than somewhere here. And so I'm just wondering if that's an option to open more general fund dollars. They, they come out of our housing fund. The CAB fund comes out of the a special one. fund for housing. So this, the um, down payment assistance would be out of the general fund um, because it, it really depends on whether or not the applicant would qualify for low income and there's so many I know that it comes out, but I'm speaking more specifically to the grants that we allocated the three years. And maybe you can just come back with whether we can um, utilize any more of this for the three-year grant cycle that we've already approved um, in the future. And I think for the increase, for the recommendation that you're making on the 100,000 for our, our employee, you know, could we build another sector, you know, build that in as an option for them to access these programs as well? Or, because that just opened, that could open $200,000 in general fund, essentially, you know. Yeah, we'll, in general. we'll definitely take a look at it. You know, I, I have a recollection that the housing trust has some specific rules that says that like employees can't take advantage of it. And yeah. so, but, but well, we'll take a right. look. And your point is well taken, and that's actually something we try to do. Uh, we try to do every year is is look through like, hey, if we're contributing money because historically, actually, we paid the funding for the housing for health sheltering efforts it used to be called the HAP. We had to pay that out of the general fund. Um, and so changes in redevelopment law let us use the redevelopment agency fund. And then more recently with the PLHA funding, our plan is to transition it there. So our goal is always to find these, but it's always good to look and check and see if there's an opportunity to utilize the restricted funding rather than general fund. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, Kristen, I don't know if that was your No, question. no. Did you yeah, I'm done for now. Um, I just have one question. With the City Hall options study, does that include the police department as well, or is that specifically City Hall? It's both the police department and City Hall. Okay, thanks. Okay, um, I think I did have a couple questions. Um, 
it, this might be actually more <laughs> infrastructure wise, but um, the bollards, I noticed um, a lot of that we still put out wooden barricades during the last like couple events instead of using the bollards or maybe I'm not seeing that correctly. Yeah. So the removable bollards were actually purchased with a grant through the, it was through the county. Uh, and we got that a couple of years ago, but those are removable bollards. And so we've been utilizing those depending on the traffic flow. Okay. So if it's gonna be a, like a lockdown event, because once we put them in place, they're, they're supposed to be locked up. So depending on the traffic flow. Okay. Okay, and so they're they're usable, they're yep. in good shape. Okay, they're, they're, cool. They're usable and like I said, we've, it, that was that was all funded on a different, different okay order. gotcha and then I noticed um, one of my goals from the previous session it I think it was highlighted as green as completed but I'm not sure what the status of that project is for the crosswalk at Esplanade and Stockton Bridge yeah that that's not correct uh, because that yeah that project hasn't been completed, so I think that one should be orange. But let's let's hear from our uh, public works director. We have four of those on order, so they've been paid for. Cool, but okay. they've not been installed. Okay, yes. awesome. So partially completed. Okay, well, good. Good to know. I'm glad it's on the radar. That's awesome. And then um, oh yeah, and then I was going to ask about charging stations, but we covered that. All right. So, any public comment? We do have one from Great. Welcome, Valerie. You can unmute yourself and you have three minutes. Oh. <laughs> Got all excited. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> Okay, so we'll take it back to council. Comments, deliberation, <coughs> things. Are we pulling up one of our fun spreadsheets? spreadsheets you wanna go Jamie full spreadsheet right now? Spreadsheets. We're, going, we're going spreadsheet, let's do it. <laughs> You're so predictable. You Jamie. are. Who's prepared? So here's a spreadsheet. I put it put it together. I think I've got everything that was on that sheet before. That's right. Starting with the debt payoff, and then the project listed out. So if council members want to weigh in on them, you can do it. Sometimes what we've done in the past is council members say looks good or I just don't want to do X or let's move money. Um, you want to go certainly. item by item? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, you know, it's kind of a council's discretion how you best want to move through it. Um, but this was saved if you want to go through it each way or if council members say looks looks fine, I would like to make two changes. That's whatever format works best uh, for you. But we're prepared I'm to take notes and do math on the fly if necessary. I'm good with going through each piece just piece it out, make it okay. clear. Okay. So the debt payoff, any comments? I have a, just a general comment that I feel like we're allocating nearly $5 million. Me personally, having seen this list of 10 or so items just yesterday, and you know that $5 million is not a small amount of money. I don't personally feel like we are dedicating an appropriate amount of time to this amount of allocation. I would love to see this list weeks in advance and have multiple meetings to discuss it. So one thing that may help a little bit in that is, is that we're actually not making any final decision now. 
this oh, is so we will have another meeting yeah we actually here. that entire budget calendar good, is good, about good. discussing these things. okay you so, have 20 more times yeah yeah i thought this, this. was we we're gonna, supposed to you, approve this yeah. right now you wish it was that easy yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> good. No, setting okay. of those right. ideas yeah. mayor that. kaiser though if i may some of the items i want to pr propose today might force the other items to be reduced a little bit and so i don't know that if we want to kind of if you want to see what I'd like to propose or if other, other council members want to propose other items, so then we know how to shift the shells, if you will, of dollar allocations. Um, oh, because so, you think your points won't fall under well, some of Well, I these definitely things. think that we should do some of these items, but my project for something else that I want to allocate dollars might lessen the EV vehicles or something like that. Okay. So I'm just wondering if, if council members would rather propose some of their items first and then we can do the shell game of dollars. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Do you wanna start it off? Let me pull out my 15 page. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and I don't actually have more. Um, my first comment is about the $20 allocation from the 2022-23 EV program that we wanted to, uh, um, while that will be continuing to this year, I, I would ask if we can leverage those dollars to create that program, Jamie, that you were referring to, to create find a partner. So it just seems like in a year since we've created that as a goal, we've recognized that we can't really manage EV stations and that we should maybe move in that direction. And with that being said, I'd also like to see if we could use those same dollars, um, the $22, $23, um, to see how much it would cost to move one of those EV stations from the library to our um, dedicated spot. Um, because we've had a lot of library uh, complaints about parking. Mm -hmm. And so, and they're not all being used right, like as frequently as they could be if they were in another spot. So that actually might be cost saving. Um, how many are at the library? I want to say three. Two, right? Two, Two or Two? three? Okay. They're look, I think they're looking forward to what's in the future. There's going to be a lot more electric cars. Yeah. True. Yeah. Um, and so maybe we could put one on the sidewalk or look at other options. Um, but right now, parking is a hassle. And I am sure council members have gotten yeah. all com a lot of complaints about. So just opening one more spot. We could potentially leave the infrastructure there and open it up temporarily yeah. until demand for electric vehicle charging yeah. increases. I love that. Yeah. Um, so not using more money, but just utilizing that 20,000 20, from last year. Um, so the other one I'd like to do is see an increase to our city council travel allowance to $3,000 per council member. There's an increase um, of League of Cities costs that, and we all like to attend those and some other increase, just we haven't done an increase to city council travel in a while. Um, so I'd like to propose an increase, and I don't know how much that would cost for us to move up to 3000 per council member. Wouldn't it be five grand? Oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> A year. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> um, you've actually touched on those. So the dedicated children's fund, we had 37000 um, what I'd like to see is maybe some information from Parks and Rec to come back to us on the best way. So I saw if there's some grants, or excuse me, scholarship funds. We did a two-year. I don't know how much of it was used, so I don't know whether we need more um, to maybe move that dedicated children's fund to Parks and Rec. So um, I'd like that for that information just to come back to us, then I know how much we need to allocate more for scholarships. It was if they were fully utilized and we need all that money again for scholarships or so forth. Um, yeah, I think there's one other thing, but I have to look at my other notes for that. Um, um, ideas, but more specifically for scholarships. Um, in your report earlier, you said we had a two year um, scholarship fund at 36. 39,000 or something like that. Um, and so I need to know whether you need it all again or we can use it for a new van electric vehicle for them or something like that. Um, 
This one doesn't cost money, but I'd love to add it as a goal or an intention of city council. And this is to adopt the Children's Bill of Rights. The county and the city of Santa Cruz has moved forward with that, but I'd love to um, get that in. And there's language from the city and from the county already um, ready to go. There's also, I didn't see anything about our climate action plan. I believe last year we talked about looking at our climate action plan and I know we have new staff um, on board and so I'd love to see that continue into this year and I believe what we said was that we've created <coughs> a plan, we have goals, but we really haven't identified how to prioritize those goals and what projects we want to move forward with. So again, that's not gonna really take funding, but I think it's worth mentioning again for council to um, at least know that I wanna prioritize that um, into this new year. And I mention it only because you, you staff mentioned it a lot today that there's a lot of 3CE funds that we can access. And it's almost like my own personal challenge to access as much as possible um, because those dollars come and go every year. And so I'd like to see what we need so then we can access those dollars. Um, there is the, the MCR report that I can't remember what each word means from LAFCO, but they, you, you know what it is, don't you? Okay, what does it mean? <laughs> the MSR report is the Municipal Service Review. The Municipal Service Review was just completed for the City of Capitola for, from LAFCO, and one of the things that they mentioned was that, or suggested is that the city evaluate the spirit influence. Um, this is something that every city, I think it's in every city's plan, um, but it'd be great for us to look at that, especially with um, the mall development, mall redevelopment project taking place on 41st and looking at what our options are um, just in our general sphere of influence. And so to do such a study, I think we have to ask LAFCO about how much that costs, but I would say about 25,000, 30,000. Um, that's just off the top of my head of um, fees, but that might just have to come back to us because I don't know how much. And then lastly, um, I actually did a really quick survey about programs for a gun buyback program. And um, there are other jurisdictions that have this set up and are looking for partnerships, um, but we have to allocate some dollars. And I think allocating or starting with $5,000 um, to create a gun buyback program would be great for the city of Capitola to start with um, and then leverage other communities uh, or partners um, who might want to increase those. Don't we do that already? We don't have don't a gun Don't we partner buy. with someone to do that already? Sorry to interrupt. No, that's a good question. It is a good program. So I know that the that we have partnered with the Sheriff's Department in the past, and I don't know that we brought any actual funding forward, but I know that we definitely participated as, with the gun back buyback program, the city, but the, the county chiefs does have, have a fund that we do. I mean, we've, it's been a, a, a point of discussion in, the, in recent meetings. And so I think with if, if this is approved, there would be additional funding that would probably come from that chief's fund, which is part of the sheriff's department. Oh, uh, cool. But it was successful three or four years ago. The point, I think we ran out of money. Um, wow. That was, wow. That was, I think it was like $20,000 and they went through it pretty quick. Oh, cool. Um, That's okay. awesome. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, and then the other information that I most recently received was about the um, the inclusive playgrounds. We were looking, well, we're, we're partnering with the parks, the nonprofit program, mm -hmm. and we've had an RFP out. There's been some conversations about that, and they were looking at a very, like, if we want to make the best park, it would be like $3 million or something crazy like that, which... Um, is a lot for a fundraiser to do. Um, at a lower level, $1.5, $1 million is what they are anticipating in fundraising. And I think um, since we have some dollars allocated, that $1 million, what I like to see is for us to increase our, our promise to the program, our promise to creating that so that the community can see that we're equally as invested um, especially because the fundraising ask is gonna be more than what was expected from the board. Um, the board meaning the, the parks uh, nonprofit board. 
So I'd like to ask for an additional 200,000 to be added um, to the funds that we already allocated for in 22-23. Um, and I know that staff has said, well, we have the $1 million, but I think that this is almost like um, getting ahead of it and allocating it today just makes it more feasible for the groups to move forward with um, what they what they want to do. Is this for Jade Street? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like to add to that when you, when you finish. Yeah, I think those are all I have on that. All the others are, um, oh, well, City Hall phase two is gonna be part of the big, the leftover dollars. Um, so I'll just, I think that was it. Okay, that's all I have. Uh, expanding on the uh, Jade Street, I've, I've had a few people approach me to have an idea to do what they did at uh, Shoreline Middle School where they put turf in. Mm -hmm. um, if we're gonna be doing the, the big upgrade at Jade Street, it'd be awesome to uh, get turf in there so we could use a field year round instead of having to wait till they re reseed it and all the bad weather and everything. Um, they had a really good outcome and success with uh, getting a lot of fundraising for, for Shoreline Middle School through Live Oak School District. I think it'd be a great project to look into to see what we can do. Yeah, and I, and I believe that the project, um, when we see the design come forward from the RFP, which they're, I think we just got, I can't, I don't really, can't speak too much of it to it, but um, that the, the idea of inclusive development is to create like the spongy stuff that makes everything accessible for kids. And so that's actually, that, that would be part of the entire project. Wait, can I ask a question about that? When you say turf, are you talking about replacing the Jade Street field? Grass, the, the soccer, oh, the whole grass the area. So just the park. Right. I'm sorry, yeah. that has nothing to do with the yeah. playground. That's but a different. That, no, the soccer field itself. Mm -hmm. So that wouldn't be part of the fundraising efforts. Mm -hmm. I'd be concerned about environmental issues with replacing so much natural environment they, with they plastic. Have, they've done studies on the, on the different turf things and um, weighing it out, the, the water use. Um, mm -hmm. There's quite a few things. That, so so the, the turf projects that I'm familiar with are, um, are shockingly expensive, um, like over a million dollars. I'm not sure, hopefully nobody's shooting lasers at me because I, I don't know that much about the projects. I'm looking back at Public Works Director. Have you done a? No, okay, so none of us have done a turf project. I think they're really quite expensive. Um, so I think if the council wanted that to be a long-term project, we would just have to go into it knowing that. I would also share with the council that previously we'd identified a goal to try to partner with the school district to look at maybe an all-weather soccer field at um, New Brighton, and that maybe crossed over our property lines between our park and our middle school. And um, and the goal was to get through the Jade Street <coughs> negotiations and then pivot to talk about that. So that is something else that's been on our radar. We haven't really made any progress on it in a couple of years, um, but that would be one to talk potentially to the school district about, you know, what are the opportunities there. So I don't want to dissuade <coughs> council. I think that the, the, you know, the artificial turf have detractors and they have supporters. There's certainly the water benefits. There's certainly the year-round benefits, um, but they're they're significant. They're significant undertakings. So if we want to put it in here, we just need to understand that either we're starting to save up for it or we're going to do some studies to check on feasibility. Uh, I think those would be my suggestions if we were going to take the first step. Would that be a conversation that needs to take place in partnership with the school district first before we even identify this as a goal? Yeah, I mean, I think realistically we would want to talk to the school district about either location if we were going to partner at Monterey Park or at Jade Street, because um, I guess Jade Street is their, is their property. Right, yeah. How about, I, think that's I don't the want first to dissuade step. anyone from it, but I, what we could do, the follow-up here could be to reach out to talk to the district staff about mm -hmm. I'd love to projects. do that. I'll, I'll reach out to them and hopefully go to one of their meetings. And... Okay, so staff, private meeting. staff can do that. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll put it in here and we'll report back during the budget cycle what that looks like. Okay. Do you have any other projects you wanted to add or anything? Okay. 
I just have a, a couple comments. Um, first, I, I'm, what really strikes me is the pavement management funding. I feel like every time it comes to us to work on a pavement management plan and work on streets, there are always people saying, well, what about this street? It's the worst. We never have enough money to do what we want to do. We're always trying to catch up. We're always trying to make sure that the bad streets don't become the worst streets and the worst streets kind of get put off a little bit longer every time. And I feel like that that's never, um, we're always kind of chasing that. We're, we're never catching it. And so I would recommend um, when we look at the pavement management funding right now, we have 350. I would recommend that we bump that up to 500 to half a million and remove that 150 uh, K from the 1 million in infrastructure hold. Um, so that would leave us at like 850 infrastructure hold. And I actually am thinking that leaving uh, the infrastructure, uh, I'm calling it infrastructure hold. I don't know what else to call it right now. Mm -hmm. um, leaving that at 800,000 and I'm trying to figure out where this other 50 K could go. Um, but right now my idea was to move 200,000 from that to put towards other projects, 150 of it towards, um, yeah. Yep, uh, to the pavement management program. Um, I'm also thinking when we're talking about just community um, improvements and renovations, and I was thinking about this the other day, um, multiple years ago, we had some kind of, um, what do you call it? Plan, uh, uh, like an idea that's not really a plan yet. I can't remember what it's called. Um, yes, concept, there it is. That's the word, <laughs> conceptual plan for uh, Esplanade Park. And it had like the big canopy um, shade coverings and it had those medallion trees and all kinds of stuff. And I have no idea what happened with that. Um, is that anything that is anywhere in our planning ever again? Or do, would we need to start all from scratch? Is there any opportunity to put $50,000 towards it to do something or? Well, first off that plan, you're exactly right. We did have like a conceptual plan prepared for Esplanade Park for an Esplanade Park kind of renovation. Um, you know, the way to get to these projects is, is you put funding in, right? Um, I guess I'm just kind of sort of trying to defend our public works department here is, is that they have so much on their plate. Of course. I'm a little bit afraid of like putting too much, I mean, putting money into pavement management, that can get spent, that's not a problem. But putting money into another project like that, it probably wouldn't get spent next year. So you may want to just say, hey, I'm going to hold that in that infrastructure line. Um, but that, that, yes, that is a project that's out there. We'd have to dust off the old plans and take a look and see what they look like and run them by the council. I don't remember exactly what the details were. But that was a thing, and that was something we did talk about a couple years ago. Could I, could I even lean in even further? Because mm -hmm. I like where Council Member Brown's going with this. Because um, I hear you, though, about, about bandwidth. But um, we have an Arts and Cultural Commission with also funding, mm -hmm. a lot of it, and um, so much of it. I see people's <laughs> faces, so much money. No, not really, but um, to even, if we allocate the suggested amount here, but get a match from the art and cultural fund, because there's a lot of that kind of design element that could be included that simply, if you dust off the plans, you can utilize that funding. So not even having to touch, we could touch, do the 50,000, but also giving arts and cultural a task, if you will, of utilizing their dollars that they currently have. I mean, would it be considered public art? Because it, yeah, it's a that, big medallion. What did you say? A medallion? It's a medallion tree. The tree has big flowers that look like oh. medallions. Oh, that's not, but <laughs> no, no. something else I was in that reference. Else too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But perhaps we could use, I'm, I mean, it's just, I know that would be nice to have the arts and cultural after. You know, they put so much work into the stairs, and yeah. there's just projects and it's art kind of opportunity sense. there. And I think this is a, maybe a perfect way to collaborate. Can collaborate. can we for now? Maybe the best route here for now, because I don't know if we're allowed to essentially tell arts and cultural we're taking your budget for this, and I don't know if they want to take it on. I know there's been other projects in the past where they're like, we don't want to do this, um, which is fine. They have, they have the right to decide their priorities as we're doing now. Okay. But would it make sense for us to say, you know, let's reserve that 50,000 for, um, I don't know, Esplanade Park improvements and just leave it at that. And then, you know, if bandwidth opens up, then we'll use it. If it doesn't, then come the next mid-year budget, you know, change or if something breaks in Espl Esplanade Park or something. But I'm thinking, you know, it's been a long time since we've considered improvements down there. Um, 
And especially when you, I don't know if you all saw in the, um, was it the Capitola SoCal Times recently, uh, Andy of the Brit was talking about how those concrete barriers out there that those trees are in essentially protected his mm -hmm. restaurant from the waves. And so I'm thinking if there's anything that we can do to make that park more resilient and more community friendly and more beautiful, um, it's something that I would really like to put money towards, but I do understand the bandwidth of public works. Um, but I just don't want to let it go because I feel like every time when we have ideas, if it's, if it's said, we probably won't spend that money this year, then every year we're thinking, yeah, we probably won't spend it this year either. We probably won't spend it this year either. And then we're going to end up in another situation like right now where I'm saying, hey, that was five years ago that we came up with that conceptual plan for Esplanade Park. What are we going to do with it? Um, so yeah. I'm wondering Those if there's any right. way to incorporate like hazard mitigation funding with an Esplanade Park like conception conceptual wasn't, design. Okay, well, now I'm going down a whole other well, rabbit now, hole because um, wasn't there talk about raising the seawall at some point? That was the climate action from last year that we. Yeah. That's. I mean, that's why I mentioned it here is because essentially we need to revisit that and there's staff now. We didn't have staff mm -hmm. to really take that bull by its horns. So I'm entrusting staff. But Kristen, to your point, I, I understand staff is inundated too, but this is up to us to move projects forward. Yeah. And we're not really adding a lot of big projects. We're reserving dollars. So I'm behind you on 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 this one for, for the um, Esplanade Park. Okay, well then let's just put it up there for, put it up there as that 50,000 set aside for Esplanade Park improvements as a goal for the year, for now. Sure. Is that fair? I'm new to the Art and Cultural uh, mm -hmm. Committee, but I, I'm pretty sure they would love to take it on. And, okay. And we, we can take it to them and okay. go from there and see, see what we can do. Okay. So one, one nuance about the Art and Cultural Commission, definitely their funding is restricted and it has to be for art designed by a professional artist. I don't remember all of the requirements. Nikki's not. So Perfect. they were actually involved in that conceptual <coughs> plan, I think because if I remember correctly, was that conceptual plan necessitated by the sea lions? I think no, it was, it was way before the sea lions. Was it? Yeah, it was like 2016. Okay. Oh. I wasn't here for it, so. All right. It's definitely before. Um, yeah, but, but for sure, we can put money in you know, to a project as long as there's the understanding that you know, we're pretty we're pretty tight, but you're exactly right. You know, you get to a fully funded project by starting funding. And the other reality is, is that there's been many times we put money into projects and then we've reallocated it to new priorities. So right. it's not, it's not gone. And then do we want to clarify the actual amount that we have for the street repair? Because I feel like there was like the 350,000 plus that other 550, but if, Vice Mayor Brown wants to add more, like mm -hmm. what's the actual number we're jumping off of for the streets? So for time being right now, um, I'm just sort of taking down all the different ideas and then I can kind of recap because they're, I think. I just mean what we started with in yeah, your so presentation. We started with the, my recommendation was 900K between the restricted street funding and then the additional 350. If, if we went with uh, Council Member Brown's recommendation, that would increase the total to a million fifty. And that was your idea, you think? Yeah, to, to keep the the nine, what was it? 900? 900. 900. I think it was 900. Yeah, to keep us. Yeah, to, that we were to use anyways, where that was already planned for in, for pavement management. And then the what was left in this general fund balance right there was 350. And so my uh, thought was to add an additional 150 from general fund balance to make that an even 500,000 and take that 150 from the hold for major infrastructure project projects. And then another 50 for Esplanade Park, which would turn our major infrastructure projects down to 800,000. So that way I'm trying to move money around rather than add money that we don't have yet. Totally. So like it would keep our total 4.8 or whatever. Right. Um, but it would pull from other things. I guess I'm just wondering like what that 900, if say we didn't add anything, where does that 900 get us? So maybe we don't need to, the, if the we're looking at our problem streets and uh -huh. then with, but I, I guess we worked on it with Jesper, but. Wasn't the idea that the additional funding would allow us to move some of the projects from 24 into 23 or something along those lines? So then that so way we'd, we'd essentially become a year ahead, yeah. Okay. And I think, and the idea with that was because that way all the streets that are 
at risk of becoming really bad, we could stop them when they're bad. And then hopefully in the coming years, the ones that are already really bad, we can fix up instead of constantly just trying to keep things from getting worse. I mean, in like the presentation too, the more money you throw at it up for, or the more money you save in the long run. Exactly, so. yeah. Well, and also this year is unique because we have one-time funding. Right. Mm -hmm. So in a year from now, <clears throat> we might not be in a place with this kind of, yeah, yeah, this, this extra funding that we have. So, so I, I think it's smart, right, that we allocate, you get the projects done and then in turn, that could even save us a little yeah. bit more and open up more funding in the 24, 25 year, which seems forever away. <sighs> I wonder, yeah, like how much money do we lose by putting this off? You know, like we're paying off the debt that's at 5%, like are we gonna lose more money by not repairing the roads to a certain standard, mm -hmm. you know? Like what's <laughs> the most efficient use of our funds? Uh, regarding, there's you know, honest, okay. It's a, a, obviously complicated. Yeah, but. it's a complicated question, and there's actually a school of thought that mm. you know, the smartest thing the city could do would be to go and borrow $30 million and redo every single street today, and then only do slurry seals from here on out, because the slurry seals are so much more so presumably just nip everything you possibly can in the bud. Actually, the smartest thing to do would be to do every single street that is worth repairing, and then leave <laughs> terrible streets alone, which of course would be politically Revenue yeah. measure for $30 but million dollars in street repairs? That's, I mean, that's, I think, I think yeah. if you talk to sort of the payment expert, that's kind of the so thing. So, like, like the rate of interest pay. is going to be lower than what we're costing to maintain these, how we're doing it in the long run. I think in general that that's probably true. Um, honestly, one of the things that the former public works director and I talked about at one point was, you know, could we do a half cent sales tax for 10 years and just do every single street? I think we actually talked talked to council about that during possible ballot initiatives last year and unfortunately the cost for all of the streets was staggeringly high it was like yeah. it, it, it what i was hoping it was 15 million or something and it was something like 30 and we just don't see that kind of money but yes you're thinking you're thinking is exactly right that there is actually a mathematical formula right. like the smartest thing to do is to rebuild all your streets but well what, what's also not included here is where you're recommending we pay off our loan, and I don't know how much we pay a month on that loan, but essentially that amount of money is gonna come back to us on a, I don't know if you pay monthly or when I pay my bills biweekly, you know? So, I mean, essentially there's gonna be more money coming back into right. us, and so even to your point, Alexander, like reinvesting that into these types of projects that we know thing. have that kind of impact yeah. might be smart. You do have that, I, our monthly yeah, payment? Yeah, actually, so $40,000 a year savings would be approximately the savings by paying off that loan. A um, couple caveats there. One is that the loan was a three and a quarter percent. Um, so we're not actually saving quite that much. Uh, in addition, we've also used that housing, um, housing trust fund to pay some of it. So it isn't all sort of going to the so you're absolutely right. Paying off that loan would reduce our ongoing obligations moving forward. Um, it's not a ton of money. Yeah. So it's already at the 5.5. It reset. It just went up this year. This year. Did. Okay. This year. That's why we're getting ready. So $40,000 yeah, yeah. a year. For I sure. mean, I guess like how, if we spend a million dollars, for example, that million dollars hold for infrastructure, if we dedicated that to streets, like how many thousands of dollars would we be saving per year? Like, is that something that we can get calculated at some point in the future? I think it's something we can work on. Yeah, I think that that's something we can try to present. It well, would be, like, but, reasonable to understand that in What you terms. might even like is that spreadsheet that we had of the breakdown of year Which, to year. And so by us covering the next two years today, then you'll have an idea of, like, what's left in terms of our projects. And then that's the calculation. But that would be really great to see of our, our projects and how they're um, they're identified from worst to best or whatever it is and the cost associated. It's really yeah. helpful. And we we already did some of that that we approved from last year. Mm -hmm. So we're already at least you're ahead of the game. <laughs> the trajectory. Okay. Um, I have things, yeah. Yes. Um, okay. So yeah, I have a, I have a handful of um, ideas. Some of them 
may be free, some of them may be able to take funding from elsewhere, and some of them may be appropriate to allocate some of these one-time one -time funds for, sorry. <laughs> um, so I have a, a couple things um, revolving around environmentalism that I, I am interested in pursuing, and I'm not sure if there's that would be appropriate to take from these one-time funds or from some other pot, but um, one of them is to increase the number of public water fountains with um, the capability of filling up water bottles to reduce uh, plastic use, single-use plastic. Um, I'd like to promote the California Green Business Certification Program, which may or may not cost some, an unknown amount of money. I'm actually talking to them and probably will meet with them next week. The California Green Business Certification Program is a um, statewide program that um, offers certification to businesses who meet a number of criteria regarding environmentalism. And it's a free program to businesses and they actually offer um, rebates um, from time to time of up to $500, I believe, for businesses that um, want to spend that money to meet their qualifications. So it's a great program. They've done a lot of good work in our state. Um, and I think like uh, the county and city of Santa Cruz are already partnered with them, but I think it would, it would make a lot of sense to work with them to promote that um, in our city. One more environmental thing, but uh, maybe I'll come back to that if I find it. Uh, I'd like to have a mall redevelopment committee to make sure that we're um, working together with all interested parties and potentially community stakeholders and moving that project along. I think it's a really complicated project and it should be one of our top priorities uh, in the coming year. I don't expect that that should need any budget, but um, more of just a goal. And I'd uh, also be interested in maybe dedicating some funding for uh, programming at the um, community center uh, during it or after its redevelopment. Specifically, I'm interested in a maker space. A maker space um, is a place where people and maybe students uh, can go to use tools and um, learn about advanced manufacturing techniques. So it's a education, workforce development, and um, economic development a space for communities that are really popular. I, I think it would be a great idea, uh, but that would definitely require funding. I'm sure there's a lot of, um, or potentially grants out there that could help fund that. Uh, and then another program I had in mind is um, in an intergenerational program to connect the elderly to children. I think there's a lot of benefits out there and for that and a lot of really good examples of successful programs. So I just think if we're spending, you know, $2 million renovating the community center, it would make sense to put some amount of money towards programming and to make sure that it's you know, utilized to its full extent. And, oh, speaking of goals, yeah, I would be in favor of, and I don't know if this is also, wouldn't cost anything probably, but um, I would definitely be interested in spending more time looking at strategic goals, specifically in the um, greater than one year, like five, 10, 15 year strategic goals for the city. Um, and just really maybe having some sessions as a city council to think about the direction that we want the city to go in in the long term. That's all. Yes. <laughs> to try to, uh, so I think I, hopefully I've got them up on the screen here. Do you, do you want, um, for some of these, do you want to put a dollar figure at, at this stage associated with them or do you want us yeah, well, you know, like the wa public water fountains, I don't have a good idea of how much that would cost or like what locations would be appropriate sure. for that. I mean, the programming, maybe. If, if, if I may, 
with like the maker space, I'm just wondering, instead of putting a nut amount, mm -hmm. if we could dedicate staff time to seeking grants mm -hmm. for, um, I know that the school districts have them, right? Um, have, and there's a lot of grant funding out there, so maybe dedicating staff time to inquiring about a grant and seeing how that, that goes would, and then bringing back that. Yeah. What, and then the other thing I'm thinking of is for your intergeneration program to connect with youth leader, youth and elders and other com entire community members <laughs> um, that I think once Nikki comes back to us with where they are with funding wise, maybe if we do have some dedicated children's fund dollars, we can push that, that back to Parks use. and Rec yeah, to like explore that a little mm -hmm. bit if, if you'd be open to that. So not necessarily putting dollars on those two items today, but staff time for the grants and then a potential um, funding funding support for Parks and Rec to look at some of the programs you're referring to. Um, I think it might make sense to allocate some funding specifically for um, materials for something along the lines of a makerspace or, or other programs, whether you know it be something else, like do we have money allocated for the community center to buy things other than infrastructure to support yeah. these programs? Do you do you have a timeline? I'm just thinking because we're in develop we're Yeah, it might be it. next year, Maybe, right? Maybe yeah. And yeah. so if we find the grant funders, then we know we need X amount of money yeah. for next mm -hmm. year, then we can allocate those dollars next year. Yeah, that's reasonable. Okay. I'd be willing to support that. Mm -hmm. And then I guess I have a follow up like about the mall redevelopment. I know we're, are we just kind of sitting here waiting? I mean, that's the vibe I'm getting. So I don't know as much that's as- That's why we should have a committee. <laughs> well, and, well, and that's what I understand, but it's up to the developers to decide. I don't know if we can be beating down the doors of developers to, and maybe we can, I don't know. I think we can definitely, and, and then to, take to encourage developers. Okay, well then. Uh, require, I think that requires coming together with, you know, key stakeholders and making a plan to how, to, how exactly we want to do that. I think we could look into a committee. I think the, the I'll just sort of add a little, a little bit about committees is um, it's usually good for committees to have a good purpose, right? And give them a clear charge, beginning, beginning middle, and an end. Um, sometimes you can form committees and they can have a lot of money to their own. And so that can be a little bit of time to just, frankly, just take up staff time. The mall has been a hell of a project. And it's just like the pace at which it's happened has been incredibly frustrating to me. I know some council members are frustrated. I know my community <laughs> development director is frustrated. So, I mean, I think along those lines, if the council formed a, a committee and, and tried to put like a specific purpose and said like, give us a report regarding feasible options to accelerate mall redevelopment within three months. I think that that could make some sense. I think opening the door to sort of a standing mall committee where we get together and we kind of just wring our hands and say, this is really no. frustrating. I mean, That's I think part of the committee would be to have these very strategic goals and timelines and create those. Yeah. That's, I mean, yeah. That's why I love committees. <laughs> <laughs> That's not weird at all. <laughs> Well, and I think that we owe it to our new council members to even give them the, the space and the opportunity to learn more about all the work that's been put into it. And I don't know that you've been given that. Um, and so I think it's, and it, maybe it's not even forming a committee quite yet today, but meeting with staff, talking about what that could look like, seeing how much more you need and who the stakeholders would be. Because I don't know what stakeholders you're envisioning. When we started this right. four years ago, at least for me, the stakeholders were very were different, right? So um, I think it's fair to say that coming up with some sort of plan and coming back to us with it. Um, sometimes committees and ad hoc using different terms require different, um, like Brown Personal. Act and like all that sort of stuff. And, um, so I I don't know if you'd be open to working with staff and coming back to us on that because I I could get behind that. Uh, yeah, I mean, we can come up with a plan for specific details of the committee. Yeah, definitely. Cool. 5,000 pages of reading for you. 
<laughs> I've read a lot, yeah. And, and I, have, I have met with a good amount of people and had a lot of discussions about the mall redevelopment, but, you know, gotta get together, gotta make gotta it a regular together. thing. I hear you. Okay, so any of Alexander's points, are, are we looking at a dollar amount? I was gonna ask specifically for the water fountains. Do you have a dollar amount in mind for that? Or have you, you have, a, have, have you does talked anybody to... have a recommendation on that? I have I've never purchased a water fountain no. at well, all. Well, why don't so. we reach out to um, keep sap sapicola. Keep Capitola Salty is um, the nonprofit organization that the Capitola Beach Company has, and they're the their, that, their company is the one that installed the two latest ones that we have. So if they're willing to, they the 10% of the profits that they receive for that brand goes to environmental like additions or anything, mostly within the village. So they might be the people, they might have 10% sitting there ready to spend. And if we have ideas of where we want those water fountains um, to go, that might be something that isn't necessarily coming out of our fund, but it's part of the vision of the environment. A few years back, the foundation put one at New Brighton Middle School, and it was, I believe it was 15,000 for one. Mm. 15,000? Yeah, for one at the, high school, at the middle school. But if, we, if the Art and Cultural Commission painted it, it would be a piece of art. You remember Andy? What, uh, Chief, excuse me. A thousand to fifteen thousand. Yeah, we we put one in at New Brighton Middle School. I mean, and maybe the foundation could, paid for it. Could it, staff take a look at this and potential spots and prices and come back to council? Sure. Yeah, we can come back. That yeah. would be reasonable. And identifying that how many that would be helpful. Yeah, like too. how like, many yeah, would yeah. be appropriate and location. locations and average pricing, and then we could like yeah, just Monterey have a better Park, idea. Of, Monterey Park. I mean, that could also be a fundraising thing, almost like the bench program or something. Like, hey, do you want to fund this water fountain and have oh, your name on it? Oh, <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I will know that we are describing the exact opposite of pavement manager projects. <laughs> <laughs> There's small dollar figures with a lot of staff work as well. I want my so. name on a water fountain. <laughs> I mean, these I are little things. No more, I no appreciate more. the enthusiasm. And we'll take a look and see what we can find out. I, 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 I'm sure that there's options to replace water fountains and potential partnerships. Um, it's like, just, that is the challenge, isn't it? Like, those kinds of things often are like lower dollar figures and lots of, yeah. lots of work. You, we know, can, you, you know, this is can't put a price put on being on. environmentally friendly. Exactly. <laughs> or a uh, staff, staff hours number. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. I want to move. I, I want to move numbers around when yeah. we're done. Yeah. Are we ready? Because I'm ready. This is, this is yeah. my favorite part every year. I feel like there's enough I meat up there to start carving. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Councilmember Brooks is asking for two hundred thousand to go towards the uh, park. I would say move that from the one point eight five for the community center, and that would make the community center one point six five. So we're still keeping keeping some money there. We need a new call. And then the 200,000 that we just moved would be for towards the um, inclusive playground. Which will in turn so be the new project, with right? fundraising. That was one of the new things she added and I'm I'm trying to add the new things but keep it within our budget. Within 4.8. Within 4.8. So that's what I'm doing is trying to take everyone's ideas and put the money things in with the money things we already have which is super technical way of saying that. Oh, no. I'm just massaging it. Okay, so then the pavement management would be 500,000 now. I have in here. Oh, the um, gun buyback program was like $5,000, I think, and that's not a lot. So I would say put that into part of the uh, police tech updates. So I don't know if you want to consider that taking 5000 away from police tech updates or just adding gun buyback to police tech updates. Um, but essentially, How many guns would. What? <coughs> How many um, guns? 
Does Chief Daly need that as a separate separate line item? Do Does it need to be a separate line item? That you would take away from from the tech one. Okay, so how, whatever the tech one was, make it five less and add gun buyback. Well, how many guns would that acquire? Yeah, yeah how much you how much are we paying I, these people? I, you know, I, I know. It, it, it I have a quick thing. Handguns or rifles, but I think it's between. Oh, so oh, that's, that's okay. quite a few. Okay, that's quite yeah, a few off was, the street. Actually, I was like, I heard like five hundred, seven hundred, and a thousand is like the the general, and so. I still think we get enough if we can okay. leverage our partnership. Does that sound so? Wait, so you do want to use five thousand, or you don't? I, five thousand, I think, is a good. Oh, okay, start. okay, yeah. okay. So uh, okay, so did you already did you already reduce the tech updates by five? Increase. Oh yeah. No, no, no. It reduced the tech updates by five, and then in, and then we, add. We added five thousand to it, and for the uh, gun included buyback. gun buyback. Oh, just added five thousand yeah. to yeah. it. Okay. okay, sure. For this, for that, this sake, that's fine. Um, uh, at fifty thousand for the Esplanade. Yes, because we took eight hundred uh, inf inf one million for infrastructure is now eight hundred thousand mm -hmm. instead of a million. Yes. Oh, yeah, right there. Yeah, sorry, that's eight hundred now. <laughs> um, I think a lot of. Council Member Peterson's ideas don't cost anything yet, as far as we can tell, but I think it's good to add them in the goals, right? Right. Mm -hmm. um, Council Member Clark's idea about the field and the turf, um, super basic, not any detailed search, so that there's a 2023 California turf rebate of up to $20,000 for commercial and municipal projects. So maybe that's something worth looking into, even if we're not budgeting it right now, to look into, make it a goal to look into that because I think he's right for things like water savings and um, whatnot. I think it's worth looking into, especially if we can get a rebate for it. Um, so I think the only things that we haven't included in terms of funding now to to get us back to equilibrium for that 4.8 is the LAFCO study and the $5,000 in increased council training. Am I right? The 35. That's not there yet, no. So what am I missing? We pulled the debt over, we decreased it by 200K, 25 survey, emissions increase by 150, 25 fiscal considerations by six, by five. It's certainly looking right. So oh, wait, you, because you added, oh, wait a minute, never mind. But how are we still over by that? Oh, no. no yeah, that's not under. Over. We're under. So now we have 15. We have 15? Is that what you said? Is that the math? Wait, so where does that 15 come from? Because I, I was reducing with, numbers as we added. 4.8. And then. Yeah, we started with 4.8. I mean. 15K for programming. <laughs> It's my brain. Yeah, so, what's like the 15K? so I'm just wondering if going over that, I mean, these are 4.8 is pretty, as we know, pretty rough numbers as we see they're not exactly. And so if we've just built that in and go over the 4.8 4 by $10,000, is it the difference? Because we know Jim's nodding his head. He's like, it really isn't technically 4.8 on a day. We have 15, but we haven't increased the council training yet. So That's not in there yet. So we had five there. Or the LAFCO study? And the LAFCO study is the other one. Yeah, so just maybe pop So is that what you're suggesting, Yvette? Yeah. Is to use, just to go it, over? So go what over. happens if we add the LAFCO study? LAFCO, what did you add it in? 25 or 30. And what's our total now? 4.8. So we're over by what, 20,000? 20, that's probably close enough for <laughs> for goal setting. That's pretty As we go good, through right? hearings, we're going to refine all of these numbers. Yeah. So. Okay, that's pretty dark. Twenty thousand out of four point so eight million. We're pretty we much there. I have that's a like question. Here. What what does it look like subtracting two hundred thousand dollars from the community center? Like, what, how is that going to affect the project? So I mean, you know, we are still developing. We're still developing the community center project. So I can't say 
what would come out um, at this stage. There's but, always opportunity for budget modifications if need be too, right? This is essentially like this is first, the first step. Draft. And to Alexander's point at the beginning, you know, what will happen next is you'll see the draft budget and it'll include these things and then we'll have multiple budget hearings. We'll have more refined numbers. We'll be able to revisit these. You know, the decision isn't made till you adopt the budget in June. Um, and, and, and if I may, Alexander, that projects like the one with the, um, at the park, similar to kind of like the library, is that when you have fundraising happen, some, generally speaking, more is fundraised. And so at the end of the day, the dollars that you see here that we've allocated of, let's say it was 500,000, we get, get some of it gets back. back. Yeah, um, but it's just more of like us saying Hey, we're, this is what we're good for. We're, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and that's my hope. I think that there's enough uh, commitment from the the group that's decided to support us in the fundraising efforts to really try to get to that number and cover this because they understand this is a lot of money. Could we um, make a note for the the EV vehicles? I know we got because since we got our grant money right for the electric. Street sweeper. Yes. That was from 3CE. Our imaginary electric street sweeper. Yeah, that's not here yet, but um, it's coming, right? It's got to be pretty noisy. Spend half a billion dollars on it. I know. So, is that something too that maybe we could just either make note of or something? I'm I'm thinking if if it's if other grant money comes available from 3CE to help with us with more vehicles in that sense, and then that would I guess. So we may not need our full two, or? Well, I mean, re so <clears throat> realistically, the two is kind of just a placeholder to sort of, I mean, if Start we were the to process. every single city vehicle yeah, yeah, yeah. tomorrow, we would spend $3 million, For right? Sure. And so yeah. we put, I think, it's 400K a year or something into the, into the more into the equipment fund. Right. And it's been less lately. It's, it's less about 200K, I would really. Yeah, so this gets us a little bit more into there so we can start sort of triggering that process faster. We are absolutely going to try to utilize all of the three CE money we can. Okay. And I know that our public works directors participated in some of the calls about helping because they have programs. <gasps> Sorry. We need new chairs also. Can you add that to the budget? Add another five million dollars to chairs. That's funny. <laughs> um, so yeah, absolutely. We'll be okay. utilizing all the yeah. Needs. I just but, you know that that number that number can be adjusted too as we move forward. So I think if this is the council's goal here, at this point we have a plan, right? Uh, and I think then we will come back with some additional information in the budget. We'll talk a bit about the turf project partnership with the school district. Uh, we'll see if we can find out more information. I'm sure we can about the water fountains. Mm -hmm. Probably not initiating a uh, adopt a water fountain program. <laughs> Just thinking about how much how much work goes in around those. Right. But I think you know we've done the partnership with the beach company, and we did a partnership. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so maybe that wants one. Maybe maybe. 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 <laughs> um, and we also I think we partnered with the community foundation on some of these water, water fountains as well. So That'd be there's cool. certain things we can work on and then come back during the budget and talk a little bit more. And then there's also the ECYP fund. It sounds like there's some good ideas out there about the ECYP fund, which we can talk more about the budget. And if you can add on, and again, it doesn't have to do with any exact dollars, but the projects that we're going to allocate staff's time to in terms for grants. So, because um, I think that's really important. That's how we got here today, right? What has been by applying for grants that we've never have gone for in the yes. past. So I think it's just important that we continue to do that work and understanding that your staff time is limited, but we know that the outcome has benefited the city. So um, uh, on, a, on a larger scale, really trying to continue to do that. And, and if you can make sure that when you come back, you're, you can say yes to the maker space, the water, the, you know, whatever they want, there was a lot of them, but um, identifying those and, and the departments that are gonna be focusing on them, that'd be great. Okay. <clears throat> so is this enough direction? Are we feeling good about this? Great. Do uh, do we need roll call for this? Or is this just our direction? It's really up to you. 
I, I think at this point, if council's everyone at the table, we could, we could just this direction, do a yay or nay. The budget. Yay. Voice vote. Yeah. All aboard. Yeah. All aboard. Oh, yeah. I keep forgetting. We can do voice votes. We can do again. voice votes we don't now. Have to do roll calls every yeah, time. Yeah, that's true. Hi. <laughs> Just for Jamie. I know. <laughs> I love voice votes. I know you do. <laughs> um, okay, great. I'm not missing anything. No. Item eight adjournment. Good job, everybody.